Hello, my name is Kathleen Miller. Today, my disease report is on botulism. Botulism is a very serious but rare illness caused by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. It's responsible for about 145 reported cases of human botulism in the United States per year. There are five main manifestations of this infection. It includes foodborne, infant, wound, adult intestinal, intestinal toxemia, and iatrogenic botulism. Now the first three are the most prevalent in the United States, um, but adult intestinal toxemia is very similar to um, infant botulism in the way that it's ingested. And iatrogenic botulism is also called inadvertent botulism. It involves overdose of the botulinum toxin. Um, so the first three are going to be covered in this presentation. Characteristics of this bacteria include gram-positive rod-shaped morphology. Um, they thrive in low oxygen to no oxygen environments and they form spores. They also fit into the mesophile range of bacteria. They produce neurotoxins um, as they grow, and this is one of the most defining characteristics of this bacterium. They grow and thrive in soil and marine sediments where they are able to contaminate food and wildlife, such as fish. They were first recorded in 1735 where in some cases they were linked to sausage consumption and the German physician John Mueller derived the name of the bacteria from the Latin word that means sausage. The neurotoxins that these bacteria produce are some of the most toxic biological substances known to man. There are seven different types and they are designated by the letters A through G. Only types A, B, E, and F are toxic to humans, but all of these neurotoxins are able to affect either mammals or humans in some way. They attack the central nervous system by interacting with nerve cells, and eventually they can block neurotransmitters from releasing signals to other cells. Um, this halts muscle movement and can cause flaccid muscle paralysis. It usually occurs um, symmetrically and moves down the arms, legs, or respiratory muscles. Only microscopic amounts of these toxins are needed to cause human botulism. That's why these are some of the most dangerous toxins known to man. The antitoxins that have been developed can be administered. They work by attaching the antitoxin unit to the neurotoxin and prevent neurotoxins from binding to the nerves. This does not reverse the detrimental effects that neurotoxins have already induced in the nerve cells, but they're able to prevent further degradation. The symptoms of infection of C. botulinum or ingestion of the toxins usually appear within 12 to 36 hours after introduction to the body. In some cases, um, symptoms appeared within six hours and some symptoms appeared within 10 days, but in most cases, they appear within the 12 to 36 hour range. Some of the primary symptoms include weakness, vertigo, blurred vision, and dry mouth. Now, eventually, um, paralysis is able to develop in the respiratory muscles, legs, and arms if this is left untreated. Infant symptoms are very similar to symptoms mostly seen in adults, and they include lethargy, constipation, weak cry, um, loss of muscle tone, and eventually paralysis. So foodborne botulism comprises about 15% of botulism cases seen in the United States. When food is grown in soil, 
that is contaminated by C. botulinum, spores can form on surfaces and also come into contact with fish in marine environments. These bacteria can thrive in higher pH environments. So when vegetables and meat are processed, they have to be um, cooked in higher pressure and higher temperature to decrease the chances of toxins um, with bacteria contaminating the food. Um, they have to be cooked usually at about 121 degrees Celsius and for about 20 to 100 minutes. In the cases of home canned foods, this is where most of the foodborne botulism cases come from. It can also come from underprepared food. And most of the time, foodborne botulism is treated by gastric lavage or induced vomiting and eventually administration of the antitoxin. Wound botulism happens when bacteria is able to enter the body through abrasions or needle injection. A lot of cases have cropped up in California. For example, in 1995, a pregnant woman was admitted to a hospital um, and she was diagnosed with botulism with the toxin type A. She was eventually treated with the antitoxin and her recovery lasted about two months. This botulism comprises about 20% of botulism cases recorded in the United States. Infant botulism is the largest group of botulism cases diagnosed in the United States. This happens in children below 12 months of age. Since they don't have um, normal microbiota in their digestive systems, C. botulinum is able to move in and produce toxins more than, with more efficacy than they would in adults. Now, honey is the main culprit of infant botulism. It's able to thrive in that environment. And so if you've ever heard someone say, don't give honey to kids, this is why. Infant botulism happens by um, ingestion of contaminated food that has the spores of C. botulinum. They eventually are able to um, colonize in the digestive system and produce toxins. So infants are usually treated with the antitoxin once they're diagnosed with botulism and recovery can last um, from just a few days to six months or more. So toxin use developments in technology have allowed for multiple therapeutic uses of the C. botulinum toxin. These can include muscle spasms involved with writer's cramp, eyelid spasms, childhood strabismus, also called crossed eyes, and cosmetic purposes such as Botox. However, with the use of these Highly toxic substances, dangers are still present. In certain cases, um, muscle paralysis has developed from these therapeutic use of the toxins that were just meant to help with muscle spasms. So when considering the use of these toxins in therapy, that danger has to be addressed. That's the end of my disease report. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them during the panel. These are my references, and I hope you enjoyed this report.